you are the ones that need to know that he could, he, he was able to do that. You, you have to tell the whole world that you, you saw the whole thing. You knew that the whole thing. And I have even more shame because I got the fucking text. And this last four messages from Kim to her boyfriend was, I'm still alive, by the way, by the way, but going down now. I love you. I love you. I'm still alive, by the way, but going down now. I love you. The latest news this morning, a search is underway in the sea around Copenhagen for a privately built submarine which went missing on Thursday night. On board was a journalist and the owner of the submarine, Danish inventor Peter Madsen, best known for his rocket building program, funded and manned by volunteers. Hi friends, and welcome back to Mysterious Hook. Today we are looking at the disturbing case of Kim Wall. And I wouldn't know. Because do the psychopaths know that he's... I'm not sure. So without any further ado, let's dive right into this mystery. When you are asked in the courtroom, could you tell us what you were doing at a certain time on a certain position? Uh, the reason for that question is not being curious. It's about if you answer that question and you were saying, yes, I was in the process of uh, murdering my neighbor's wife or something, <laughs> if you had to be honest. I mean, if you are under, under uh, CA, if you are, what do you call it, accused, you shouldn't say anything. Why would I want to be open to people who are interrogating me? Hell no. Copenhagen, the capital of Denmark, known as Copenhagen to locals, sits beautifully on the coastal islands of Zeeland and Amager. Generally, Denmark is known for its high quality design and architecture, but specifically, Copenhagen is the center of attraction. The gloriously green city boasts a rich and varied cultural scene, as well as a dynamic culinary landscape. With a population of over 600,000 people, Copenhagen is ranked one of the happiest cities in the world for its relaxed pace of life and liberal social attitudes. But as happy as Denmark is, it recorded a total of 54 murders in 2017. And of these 54 murders, one was the murder of Kim Wall in August 2017. Kim Wall was born on March 23, 1987, in Trollberg, Sweden. She was born to Joachim and Ingrid Wall, who were journalists. She had just one sibling named Tom Wall. Kim grew up to be a very bright child, who always stayed dedicated to her goals. 
She studied international relations at the London School of Economics and excelled. But it didn't end there. Kim took her education a step further by attending Columbia University's School of Journalism, described as the Oxbridge of Journalism, for a master's degree. Within her peers, Kim was at the top of the class, and she received honors in her year. Kim was very interested in people and their stories, and this attribute reflected in the way she worked as a journalist. Kim would go to any length to tell people's stories and make their voices heard. Kim worked in Australia as a reporter for the Swedish Embassy, as a journalist at South China Morning Post in Hong Kong, and also worked for a European Union delegation in India. Her works were published in many international publications, including the BBC, The Guardian, and The New York Times. Although Kim shuffled between New York and Beijing, she spent most of her time in Copenhagen, where she lived with her boyfriend, Alai Stubb, a game and interaction designer. The two were deeply in love and had great plans together. One of the plans they had was to relocate to Beijing, China, but life had its own plans. On August 9, 2017, Kim was at her parents' house in Trellenberg, Sweden, spending time with her family so they could take their yearly summer picture. Her family had taken a family portrait every summer since Kim was a year old, which means they had 29 pictures before August 9, 2017. Kim was also eager to see Ule, so she was in a hurry to leave for Copenhagen. Kim and Ule had plans to host their friends at their apartment the following day to say goodbye before they left for China on August 16, 2017. Kim's mother, Ingrid, knew Kim's presence was an opportunity to take the family picture, so she made sure they took the picture before she left, even though Kim's brother, Tom, was sleepy because he had worked a night shift the previous day. Unbeknownst to them, that would be the last picture they would all take together. On August 10, 2017, Uli and Kim readied their home for the house party. Soon friends gathered at their apartment, but before the merriment could begin, Kim got a call. The call was from Peter Madsen, a Danish inventor who built submarines. Peter and Kim had spoken on the phone briefly in the past about an interview. Kim wanted to interview Peter for a Wired magazine article she was writing. It was meant to be a very short interview to end her report, so she told Ule to let her be excused before the party started. Kim wanted to get the work done as soon as possible and get back to partying with her friends before it got too late. Kim apologized to her friends, who were already gathered for the party, and left for the interview. Peter Metzen was a well-known inventor who created three submarines. Not only that, but he had also built rocket ships and inspired a lot of people with his projects. Since the interview was about Peter's inventions, he invited Kim to ride with him on the UC-3 Nautilus, his submarine that was launched in 2008. Kim had a safe ride to the Copenhagen Harbor, where Peter asked that they meet. By around 7 p.m., Kim was there. Peter was already waiting for her on the submarine, and Kim, who was initially scared to go on the submarine, found her courage and climbed gently onto it. By the time the gentle wind floated around her while standing by Peter on the tower of the submarine, she realized it wasn't a big deal. At 8 p.m., she texted Ule, I'm still alive, BTW. She also texted Ule, I love you, but I'm going down now. Not long after that text, Ule received another text from Kim that reads, He bought cookies and coffee, though. Although that was the last text from Kim, Ule didn't think there was a problem, since he expected Kim to focus on her work. But soon, Ule started to get worried. Kim was supposed to be back early as promised, but it began to get later and later. When Ule could not reach Kim around 10 p.m., he started to panic. After calling everyone he could think of, he contacted the police at 1.43 a.m. and told them his girlfriend was missing. The Danish police began the search for Kim Wall, who was reported missing. They searched for the UC-3 Nautilus, the submarine that she boarded before she went missing, but Kim was not found. The members of the Danish Emergency Management Agency, DEMA, assisted the police in the search of the sea. All through the night, they searched far and wide, looking for Kim. The divers covered a large dark part of the sea, going front, back, 
right, left, center, and deep into the sea while also using cadaver dogs. Around 5.31 a.m. on August 11, 2017, Kim's mother Ingrid got a call from Ule, who told her that Kim was missing. Both Ingrid and Joaquin panicked and could only hope that Kim was alive somewhere. The rigorous search continued, but the police would not find anything until around 10.30 p.m. At that time, a rescue helicopter found the sub in a bay southeast of Amager, near the Drogden Lighthouse, at a depth of 22 feet south of Copenhagen. The police also found Peter Madsen, but Kim was nowhere to be found. Peter told the reporters that were present at the search that the submarine sank due to a faulty ballast tank. He also said he saw a fisherman's boat nearby, and he swam to the boat to escape. Peter's story never mentioned Kim, so the police questioned him about Kim's whereabouts. He said he dropped Kim off at a nearby restaurant on the night of August 10, 2017, before the accident. The police lifted the submarine for inspection, and they discovered something suspicious. They discovered that the faulty ballast tank was tampered with on purpose. They also looked inside the submarine, and they found traces of Kim's blood and her personal belongings. They questioned Peter more, and he changed his story. He told the police that there was an accident when he lost his grip on a heavy hatch door that fell and hit Kim's head. Peter said there was so much blood where Kim landed and that she had no pulse when he checked. The police knew immediately that they had to suspect Peter, but on what grounds? There was nothing tangible to hold on to. They were not even sure what really happened to Kim since her body had not been found. Eleven days after Kim Wall went missing, on August 21, 2017, a cyclist while riding across a beach south of Copenhagen made a grisly discovery. It was a human torso washed up onto the shore. New information about the mysterious disappearance of a Swedish journalist, her name is Kim Wall, in what one major newspaper is calling the most spectacular murder case in Danish history. The police department was called, and after examining the torso, they determined it belonged to Kim Wall, the Swedish journalist that had been missing for 11 days. The torso had been stabbed about 14 times in a horrific manner, and the rest of the body was not attached to it. Friends and family of Kim Wall then knew that their beloved is no more, but they still needed answers as to what happened to her on August 10, 2017. The police kept searching for answers, but found nothing until October 7, 2017, when divers found plastic bags in Koji Bay, less than a mile away from where Kim's torso was found. The plastic bags had metal scraps attached to them to prevent them from floating. And when the bags were opened, they contained Kim's head and legs. Peter was confronted again after these findings, and he changed his story again. This time he said Kim Wall died from toxic fumes while on his submarine. With Peter's conflicting stories, the police knew that he was hiding something. He also remained the only suspect in the case, as he was the last person that saw Kim alive, and he was also unable to provide clear details of what happened when they were together. Since Peter never confessed to Kim's murder, and there was no real evidence to hold anyone for it, no one was arrested. However, the police could not work based on their assumptions, so they proceeded with their investigation. The autopsy on Kim's body revealed that there was no blunt trauma to her head, which contradicted one of Peter's stories about a hatch hitting her head. The autopsy also revealed that Kim was bound and stabbed. It also showed that she had asphyxia, which means she was either strangulated or stabbed in her throat. With this evidence, the police had reasons to take Peter in for further questioning. During the investigation, his phone was searched, and the investigators found out that Peter watched a video on August 9, 2017, that detailed a young woman in pain as she was slowly beheaded with a small knife. His search history also showed that he searched for how to erase all photos on the iPhone. The investigators also found videos on Peter's computer showing women being murdered, 
and witnesses came in to testify that Peter was seen watching videos of decapitation and practicing asphyxiation. According to the investigation, no traces of Peter's DNA was found on Kim's body, but traces of bodily fluids were found in the underpants, which were secured from Peter Madison after the arrest. Under questioning, Peter denied finding pleasure while he was with Kim. Peter was born on January 12, 1971, to Annie and Carl Madsen. He spent his early life in Sebi and Hong, Denmark. Annie was more than 30 years younger than Carl and had three other boys from two previous men. Allegedly, Carl abused his three stepsons, and Annie left the marriage when Peter was six years old, taking with her all of her children. Years later, Peter returned to live with his father, with whom he shared an interest in rockets. While in school, Peter took a great interest in rocket fuel while studying physics and chemistry. He developed his first large rocket and launched it on March 3, 1986. He built it in his father's workshop and modeled it after the American ICBM MX Peacekeeper. The rocket did well, reaching a height of 100 meters before crashing. Fortunately, no one was hurt. In 1990, when Peter was 18 years old, he lost his father, but he never stopped experimenting and consulting engineers. He also joined the Donks Amateur Rocket Club, DART, Rocket Club in Copenhagen, but the other members gradually became disillusioned with him. Dark members claimed that saying his name would start the fire sprinkler system. He never finished any formal education, but took courses in welding and engineering to learn something about submarines. His enthusiasm yielded positive results as people, enterprises, and organizations saw promise in him and funded his lifestyle and work. He built three submarines. UC-1, Freya, UC-2, Kraka, and UC-3, Nautilus. The Nautilus was a privately built midget submarine launched on the 3rd of May 2008 in Copenhagen, Denmark. Constructed over three years, it cost approximately 200,000 US dollars to build. On May 1st, 2008, Peter co-founded Copenhagen Suborbitals with Danish architect Christian von Bengstan. In June 2014, he left the project. Peter was responsible for the launch systems, launch pad, and booster rocket engines. Peter was already popular with his inventions, and a good number of people took interest in him. Unknown to them that Peter was a different person on the inside, his true self was only exposed via Kim Wall's murder. On January 26, 2018, 47-year-old Peter Madsen was charged with murder, indecent handling of a corpse due to the dismemberment, and assault due to the stabbing. The prosecution accused Peter of binding, hitting, cutting, and strangling Kim on his submarine on August 10, 2017. Peter did not admit that he had killed Kim throughout the investigation. On March 8, 2018, Peter's trial began, and he pleaded not guilty to the charges. The psychiatric evaluation showed that Peter was a narcissistic psychopath, but not delusional or psychotic. On April 25, 2018, Peter was found guilty of all charges and sentenced to life imprisonment. Peter was reported to have shown no remorse while in court. Instead, he occasionally stared at people in the courtroom to intimidate them. At one point, the Wall family was asked not to pass Peter in the courtroom because of the way he acted. While Peter admitted to dismembering Kim's body, he told the court, I don't see how that mattered at the time, as she was dead. He maintained throughout the proceedings that her death was accidental. Even if Peter failed to confess, the sentencing brought closure to the family and friends of Kim, who never believed that she would be killed in a very close location to where she lived. They all knew Kim to be a brave journalist that was not afraid to go to dangerous places to get the information she needed for her work. If they ever worried about her, it would be because she traveled far and wide to work. Unbeknownst to them all, Kim would meet her untimely death in Copenhagen, the city where she lived. After Peter was sentenced to life imprisonment, he tried to appeal the sentence, but it wasn't granted. His wife, who he got married to in 2011, 
divorced him after he was arrested and asked that her identity be kept from the public. In August 2018, he was also attacked by an 18-year-old inmate, which had him hospitalized. With the fear of staying in jail all his life, he escaped on October 20, 2020, by threatening prison staff with a fake gun and fake explosives he had made while inside prison. The police chased after him and surrounded him in a nearby residential area, not far from her Sylvester prison. But the police could not move closer to him because the police thought he was armed with explosives. The bomb experts were summoned and the police waited till they arrived. When the experts got there, they found out that it was all a decoy. Then the police arrested him and took him back to the prison. For that offense, he had to go to court again, and on February 9, 2021, a Copenhagen court sentenced him to an additional 21-month prison sentence for trying to escape. Although Peter was already serving life imprisonment, it looked like the extra sentence would not affect his jail term. The additional sentence, however, would play a role if a probation request were ever made. Peter maintained his innocence throughout the case, claiming the death was an accident. But in a documentary series, while Peter Madison was secretly recorded, he reportedly confessed. According to the Danish newspaper Extra Blade, the series was based on more than 20 hours of telephone interviews with Peter from prison, which were taped without his knowledge. In one recording, when asked if he murdered Kim, he responds, Yes. He also said, There is only one who is guilty, and that is me. Three years after Kim had been murdered, her parents, Joachim and Ingrid, who were also journalists, were determined to put out their daughter's story. They found writing Kim's story therapeutic and determined that the story would not reflect the moments of her death, but instead the person that Kim's family, friends, sources, and readers knew her to be. Ingrid says, The book is our way of telling the world who Kim was, a daughter, a journalist, and a human being. The book is titled A Silenced Voice, which is a tapestry of past and present, at once a joyful chronicling of a life well lived and a family's reckoning with a life being extinguished. It follows Kim as she leaps from London to Cuba, New York to Haiti, and Beijing to Sri Lanka, collecting stories, bylines, and beloved friends as she goes. It also traces the hours, days, and weeks after Ingrid and Joachim woke up to the news that their daughter is missing and learn from the television that a stranger is being charged for the murder. Another thing that brought relief to the Wall family was the creation of the Kim Wall Memorial Fund, a grant created to support female journalists. Apart from the story written by Kim's parents, there were different TV presentations used to portray the life and death of Kim Wall. First is the investigation, a Danish-language television dramatization created by Tobias Lindholm, which shows the criminal investigation of the case. It is a six-part series that premiered on September 28, 2020, featuring different professional actors. The series was carefully scripted by engaging those involved in the investigation of the case. The investigation does not feature Peter or the crime itself, but focuses on the investigative work leading to his indictment and conviction. In September 2022, Netflix released a film titled Into the Deep, The Submarine Murder Case. Directed by Emma Sullivan, this film detailed the incident, as well as covered the life of Peter Madsen, using the documentary footage of Peter, his friends, and interns that was being filmed to document his quest to launch a rocket ship into space, using his submarine as a command center. Ole Stube, Kim's boyfriend, found it difficult to comment after the death of his beloved. But years after, he spoke about Kim and emphasized how much of a good human she was. The case of Kim's murder is a disturbing one that shows how much wickedness lies in the heart of humans. It also prompts us to think about how many women have been endangered while working in their various fields. What did you think about this case? Do you think Peter Madsen got what he deserved? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Do not forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you have a case you'd like us to cover, do leave a comment. Stay safe.
and thanks for watching.